Namaskaram. Welcome to first session of Fourier transform. There are several type of Fourier transforms. In this session, we will discuss what is Fourier integral and its application to indefinite integral. In our introductory session of Fourier transform, we have seen that several applications, including noise reduction. Okay, uh, consider this theorem. If f of x is a real valued function uh, and absolutely integrable, actually, this function is defined in entire real numbers, that means it is defined in the interval minus infinity x less than infinity. Okay, that is defined in entire real numbers. Um, and absolutely integrable. Absolutely integrable means this integral is finite. Less than infinity means finite. Okay. That means this integral is finite. And piecewise smooth. Smooth means differentiable. Okay. There is no, uh, we know that this curve is not smooth at this point because there is a sharp point. It's not differentiable. And clear it is uh, differentiable everywhere. So this is smooth curve. Okay. So that's a difference. This curve is smooth except this point. Okay. And piecewise smooth means for example, uh, you consider a curve like this. Okay. This curve has a discontinuity at this point. But these two pieces are differentiable or smooth. So this entire curve is a piecewise smooth curve. So except this point. So clearly this also piecewise smooth uh, piecewise smooth function because it is uh, differentiable except uh, this finitely many points okay so or this is a union of different uh, smooth functions such functions are called piecewise smooth function okay so of course this also is uh, piecewise smooth function it has only one piece that's all it has two pieces okay, this also two pieces that's the idea of piecewise smooth function then the fourier then the fourier integral of f of x is defined by like this okay so using this small f of x given f of x we can define an integral like this integral 0 to infinity a omega cos omega x plus b omega sin omega x d omega okay and we can calculate this a omega and b omega using these two formulas a omega equal to 1 by pi integral minus infinity plus infinity f of x cos omega x dx and we can calculate b omega using 1 by pi integral minus infinity plus infinity f of x sin omega x dx okay so this representation is called Fourier integral of given function f of x. Then there is a natural question. What is the relation between uh, this representation and the given f of x? Okay, we have a function f of x and uh, now we have a integral. We have a function f of x and we have an integral like this because a and b not using these two formulas. So what is the relation between them? Does there exist a relation between them? That is our uh, next two remark. So first remark says that the Fourier integral of f of x is equal to Fourier integral of f of x is equal to f of x at all points in which f of x is continuous. Okay, because in our assumption, uh, what is our assumption? It is piecewise smooth. Okay, need not be continuous. For example, uh, you consider a function like this. For example. You consider a function like this. It is somewhere 1, it is 2. That means at x equal to, so this is suppose uh, 1. When x is less than 1, function value is 1. When x is greater than 2, function value is 2. It is clear that this function is uh, piecewise smooth because it contains two pieces, 1 and 2. They are differentiable. So this function is piecewise smooth. It is clear that it is not continuous at x equal to 1. Isn't it? It is not continuous at x equal to 1. There is a discontinuity at x equal to 1. So this first remark says that this Fourier integral representation is equal to f of x when it is continuous. So it is clear that uh, except x equal to 1 or this function f of x is continuous. So its integral representation and f of x are same. Okay. And what about at discontinuous points? That is our second remark. So our second remark says that when f of x is discontinuous at some some point, suppose here this function is discontinuous at x equal to 1. Okay, here x equal to 1. If a function is discontinuous at x equal to 1, then what happened? The Fourier integral representation at x. Okay, the Fourier, this Fourier integral representation 
is equal to what this Fourier integral representation is equal to not f of x you f of a plus plus f of a minus by 2 that means f of 1 plus plus f of 1 minus by 2 what is f of 1 plus <clears throat> f of 1 plus means right hand limit at x equal to 1 so what is the right hand limit at uh, x equal to 1 uh, this point what is f of 1 plus and our extending to 1 through right hand side our limiting value is 2 so that is 2 plus f of 1 minus what is left hand limit that is 1 by 2 that is 1.5 okay so that means when x equal to uh, 1 when if you substitute x equal to 1 in this Fourier integral representation we get its value is 1.5 otherwise its value same as uh, our given function that is the idea of these two remarks so first of all we have to calculate the Fourier integral using given function then we have two remarks the remark says that if f of x is continuous then this integral representation is exactly equal to f of x okay otherwise if it is discontinuous then this is equal to f of a plus plus f of a minus by 2 the average of the left and right limit okay okay uh, these are the some applications of uh, Fourier integral we can solve uh, ordinary differential equations and partial differential equation using Fourier integral we can also evaluate uh, we can also evaluate indefinite some some type of indefinite integrals using uh, Fourier integral for example integrals of the form 0 to infinity or integrals of the form minus infinity plus infinity okay, we can evaluate uh, such some such integrals using uh, Fourier integral we will see uh, this application in uh, as a next problem okay okay consider this problem this problem we will see how to evaluate these type of definite integrals using Fourier integral representation find the Fourier integral representation of the function f of x is equal to 1 for mod x less than 1 equal to 0 otherwise okay so what about this function is it continuous or differentiable or piecewise uh, smooth function what is the structure of this function so first of all we have to draw this function so it is clear that uh, what about mod x less than 1 uh, mod x less than 1 means minus 1 less than x less than 1 this is modulus of x less than 1 so otherwise means modulus of x is greater than or equal to 1 okay so whenever x is in between uh, minus 1 and plus 1 our function value is 1 isn't it so our function value is 1 so this is our 1 and uh, whenever x is outside this interval that means mod x is greater than or equal to 1 mod x is greater than or equal to 1 means either x is greater than 1 or x is less than minus 1 isn't it either x is greater than 1 or x is less than minus 1 so these are the uh, range so on this interval our function value is 0 okay I think now the picture of this function is clear when x is between minus 1 and plus 1 our function value is 1 otherwise its value is 0 okay now this function is defined in the end of real numbers okay so our aim is to find this integral integral 0 to infinity sin omega by omega d omega using Fourier integral representation so first we have to find the Fourier integral representation of this given function by finding a omega and b omega then we can write the integral representation so first we are going to find this a omega what is the formula of a, a, a omega okay so <clears throat> we know that a omega equal to 1 by pi integral minus infinity plus infinity f of x cos omega x dx and similarly b omega is like this so what about our function f of x our function f of x is 1 only when x is between minus 1 and plus 1 so on these two intervals our function value is 0 so we can split this integral as sum of three integrals okay so one is from minus infinity to <coughs> okay minus infinity to minus 1 plus second one is minus 1 to plus 1 plus last one is 1 1 to infinity and what about the integral in the first integral in this interval minus infinity to minus 1 means in this interval in this interval our function value is 0 throughout 0 so what happened this interval become this integral become 0 into uh, cos that is 0 and what about the second integral in this second integral our function value is throughout 1 
So here our fun f of x become 1. So 1 into cos omega x dx. And what about the last one? That also 0 because here function value 0. So our a omega is reduced to like this 1 by pi integral minus 1 to plus 1 cos omega x dx. Okay. Now it's a very simple integration. You can easily value it. Actually, we know that cos is an even function. So you can split this integral as 2 times integral 0 to 1. Whatever b, you can easily evaluate this integral. Okay, this become 2 by pi 0 to 1 cos omega x dx and this become 2 by pi the integral of cos is sin omega x y. This integration is with respect to x. So we can treat omega as a constant. So like this 0 to 1. Okay, so when we substitute x equal to 1, this becomes sin omega. When x equal to 0, uh, this is actually 0. When x equal to 0, this becomes sin 0 is 0. So this becomes sin omega by omega. So this is our a omega. Next, we have to calculate b omega. What about the b omega? As similar to this bit up of this integral, we can split this integral as sum of three integrals. And we know that first and third integrals are 0. The second integral become 1 by pi integral minus 1 to plus 1. And what is the value of function at this interval? It is at this interval it is 1. So 1 sin omega x dx. Okay. And uh, we know that sin is an odd function. And it, this integral is of the form uh, minus a to plus i4. So what about this integral? So this integral is yes, 0. So this become 0. So our a omega is like this and b omega is 0. Next, you write the Fourier integral and just plug in a and b. Then we get the Fourier integral representation of a given function. Okay. Okay, this is our Fourier integral representation. Integral 0 to infinity a omega cos omega x plus b omega sin omega x uh, d omega. So we know that uh, this b omega is 0. So we have only one part. And just plug in this value a omega. So what happened? This integral become Yes, so by plugging the values a and b, we get Fourier integral is like this integral 0 to infinity 2 sin omega by pi omega cos omega x dx. Okay. Yes, so this is exactly a Fourier integral representation. Next, we have to find this integration. Okay. We know that there is a relation between Fourier integral representation and given function f of x. We know that there is a relation between this integral representation and this given f of x. What is the relation? If the function is continuous, then they are equal. Otherwise, this is equal to average of left and right limits. Okay. From this given function, it is clear that this function is continuous everywhere. Except which points? Yes, except minus 1 and plus 1. So at x equal to plus or minus 1, this function is discontinuous. Otherwise, it is continuous. Okay. So the result says that our uh, Fourier, uh, the remark of Fourier integral theorem says that this integral is equal to f of x whenever f of x is continuous. So it is clear that this function is continuous if x is not equal to plus or minus 1. Okay. And what about the function value at x equal to 1. x equal to 1, uh, this integral value is equal to f of 1 plus plus f of 1 minus by 2. And similarly, what about the value at x equal to minus 1? At x equal to minus 1, also this function has a discontinuity. So we have to take the average. So that is equal to f of another curve. f of uh, 1, sorry, not 1 f of minus 1 plus plus f of minus 1 minus by 2. So here f of minus 1 plus means the right hand limit at x equal to minus 1. This means left hand limit at x equal to minus 1. Okay, we have to take the average. Clear? Okay, we can also split this x not equal to plus or minus 1 as two cases because uh, our shape of the function is like this. So we have two cases. One is x is uh, mod x is less than 1. Okay, that means this range. Other case is mod x is greater than 1. That means these two cases. Okay, so 
uh, actually we have now we have five cases one is uh, uh, actually we have four cases one is mod x is less than one that means this portion mod x is greater than one these two uh, portions and x equal to minus one and x equal to plus one okay so on this range mod x less than one what about our Fourier integral our Fourier Fourier integral values equal to f of x itself because in this interval our function is continuous clear in this interval our function is throughout continuous there is no discontinuity and our mod x is less than one mod x is less than one means minus one less than x less than one it doesn't include minus one and plus one okay so Fourier integral is exactly equal to our function value our function value is one okay and what about mod x less than one oh, sorry mod x greater than one whenever mod, mod x is greater than one means either this side or this side on these two sides, our function value throughout zero it is continuous so no problem so Fourier integral is exactly equal to zero because function value is zero exactly equal to f of x okay so these two cases are Fourier integral equal to f of x okay then next case is x equal to one we consider x equal to one when x equal to one the Fourier integral our Fourier integral is equal to the average of these limits what is f of 1 plus this is our 1 what is f of 1 plus when our extending to 1 through right hand side what is the limit of the function yes it is 0 so 0 plus f of 1 minus when extending to 1 through left hand side then function value is the limiting value is 1 so by 2 and last case is x equal to minus 1 and x equal to minus 1 what happened f of minus 1 plus this is minus 1 f of minus 1 plus means extending to minus 1 through right hand side so what is the limiting value yes it is 1 plus the left hand limit is 0 by 2 okay so this is our Fourier integral so this is equal to 1 when mod x less than 1 0 when mod x greater than 1 what is this value this is uh, 0 0.5 when x equal to this also 0 0.5 isn't it this also 0 0.5 both are 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 when x equal to plus or minus sorry plus or minus 1 okay so this integral value this integral value depends x okay because omega is a variable like a variable and this depends the parameter x and depending on the parameter x this integral is equal to like this whenever mod x is less than 1 this entire integral value equal to 1 if x is mod if mod x is greater than 1 suppose x equal to 10 suppose you substitute x equal to 10 then this integral value should be 0 no doubt clear because 10 belongs to this interval that's why if x equal to plus or minus 1 then this integral value is equal to 0 0.5 that's the idea okay okay next we have to find this integral value okay, next we have to find this integral value for which value of x gives this integral this integral is 0 to infinity sin omega by omega in this Fourier integral representation contains that term and extra one term cos omega x okay so which value of x gives sin omega by omega yes whenever x equal to 0 this cos omega x become cos 0 cos 0 is 1 okay so if you if if you substitute x equal to 0 in this equation uh, this become okay so what about the right hand side so this is our Fourier integral is equal to like this so when x equal to 0 what about this integral value it is clear that 0 is here 0 is here so 0 is in between minus 1 and plus 1 that means 0 belongs to this interval mod x less than 1 okay so on this interval whatever the value of x our Fourier integral is always equal to 1 so this Fourier integral value equal to 1 okay so we have to find this portion so what about this value this is equal to pi by 2 clear so this indefinite integral is equal to pi by 2 this is the one application of Fourier integral this is your homework thank you